I don't know about you, but for me, the hustle and the always more and what's the next thing and this land of never enoughness, for me, I've actually had enough. I truly believe that is an, it is time for us to redefine what life is about, to redefine what wealth is about. So this week, we have a very special guest, a friend of mine, Jessica Lee, and we have a beautiful conversation on the hustle, redefining wealth, and the richness of life. Let's go to my interview. Jessica, thank you so much for accepting my invitation today. Oh, I'm so happy to be here. Thank you, Sarah. This was one that was long in the making happen of coordinating and everything. So I'm beyond excited that we have that we're here. And we are talking about a topic that for me is one that is so relevant mm -hmm. and that we never talk about it or that we don't definitely don't talk enough about it. But before we go on the topic for this week, could you take a moment to introduce yourself? Please? Absolutely. So my name is Jessica Lee. And I am a feminine leadership coach. And for me, my mission is to help women heal generational trauma for generational wealth. And really wealth for me is, and you know, something I've talked about a lot is the greatest form of wealth is to be able to wake up every morning, do what you desire, when you desire, with who you desire for as long as you desire. So, um, of course, this is going to say, you know, we're leading into our conversation topic today, but that that has been my passion. Um, and of course, I'll tell you all about my story. And so, yes, mm -hmm. and I do this on multiple um, levels. So from an energetic dimension, I do this from a somatic healing and also emotional so all the different layers. Um, yes. <laughs> Love it because <clears throat> we, were, we were talking before, actually for a while before, how we currently live in an era of the hustle. So I want to go start with your story and then we'll tap into the, the meaning of wealth and how do we get to re redefine that. But so you went through the hustle, mm -hmm. done, been there, done that. <laughs> checklist yeah <laughs> how do you find that we currently live in a hustle culture like what do you find that how did we get there and maybe how do we get out of there so my viewpoint on this is I think there's been and just kind of going back to what I talk about trauma I definitely feel like there's a lot of conditioning and trauma uh, for us to prove our prove our worth mm. and how we do that is by doing more and so I think from that energy you're always you know putting on a facade putting on um a facade and kind of like and when you, I think about a facade I'm thinking about kind of like how people view you Mm -hmm. right as successful so you know how we look at what success looks like typically for most people is um a fancy car um a bigger house a you know like all those things the so stuff. the stuff the, the material right and in order to have this material you kind of work for it, it it's this like chasing of it and we kind of have this like badge of honor for being busy. We're busy being busy. We're busy being busy, but not always productive per se or efficient per se. But there is this like, we're, and I've gone through this as well. Um, and that's why I can speak about this is like, if you're busy, you're more worthy in some way. I don't... The, yeah, I don't know if that resonates, Sarah. Definitely, definitely. This era of, you know, being busy, being busy, being productive, you know, and it, ask anybody how they're going to do, how they're doing. The majority of the answer that we'll, we will get is around, I'm busy. Yeah, yeah. And, and if you're not doing anything, you're lazy. 
Yes. It's like, <laughs> there's these two, there's only two options. You're busy or you're lazy. Yeah, 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 yeah. So no wonder that people get stuck in the busy being busy in the hustle because nobody wants to be labeled as lazy. No, no. That's like, that, that's the worst to be called lazy, right? Mm-hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. So understanding that we are in or stepping out of the hustle culture, I'd like to believe that we are stepping out of that hustle culture. That's just, I'll stick to that. To be able to get out of there, I think a big pillar, and this is why I wanted us to talk, because it's something that you teach and you talk about, is redefining what wealth is. Yeah. So obviously, if I identify as in, you know, the big car, the big the big house, the more clients, the bigger business, the 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 fancy suits, the nice shoes, whatever it is, that will never be enough because I'm trying to fill a void that's from the outside in. But I believe that when we start redefining what wealth is, then our menu becomes exponential. Yeah. Yeah. So what does it mean for you redefining wealth? And how do you help people redefine wealth? Yeah, so as you're saying this, it's very interesting because I... As, as you know, Sarah, I, I'm, I'm nomadic right now. And so I've basically sold all my stuff. I've sold my convertible. I've sold, you know, like all my belongings. I only have boxes I, and I travel in um, luggage. This is a place I rent in Playa del Carmen. Um, but my possessions, literally my worldly possessions, I'm going to say is probably like 10, 10 boxes. And so yeah. And so it's, it's been quite, quite a journey, honestly, like, to be not defined by what you own and what you have. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, like, now I'm thinking about it, like, I actually feel so, so freeing. Mm so freeing to not have all these things so freeing like even honestly like and like here i i don't have any designer items and i don't need to have designer items for someone to look at me and be like she's important Mm -hmm. because i already know i am important i am worthy so it's it's been a totally different life i feel um i don't know if i fully answered your question Yes, yes. And, and I like it. And you said one key word is that that freedom. And so, but you haven't always been like this. You haven't always had just stuff in boxes. You used to be like, you know, <laughs> and with the belongings, with the, you know, like I've got the convertible, this and that and this. How did you move from that world yeah. to the world of freedom that you live in now? So like everyone, like that the conditioning and I'll bring in a bit of like my background, like the Asian, yeah. Asian conditioning is you work hard, right? And we're immigrants. So like, of course, you have to work even harder mm-hmm. to prove your worth. Um, you work hard and um, you, so, so the conditioning um, is, you get some sort of a stable job, okay? So uh, doctor, I, I know this is very familiar, right? Doctor, accountant, uh, or work for the government, or what's that? Engineer. Engineer, yes, yeah, so something of so, something. Uh, stable, uh, you marry well, very important, you marry well, and you have kids and all, all these things. Like, um, and that was what I, I thought my life is supposed to be. And I've been, uh, you know, push like my parents started pushing me for marriage when I was 26. Um, so I'm I'm 36 now, and as you know, like I've never been married. I don't have kids, um, and that was kind of the mold that I was supposed to um, fit mm-hmm. the the norm, what was expected of me. And if I didn't fit that, oh, like dear Lord, like the the things I would hear was like. 
some of the names were like really, really hurtful for women. You know, after my 30s, I was basically deemed unwanted because it's like nobody wants to marry me, like as if I had an expiry date as a woman. I don't know if it's, yeah. So in, in the in the Asian culture, I'm not sure if it is, I, I think it probably is an Asian culture thing. After you're 30, as a woman, you're not married, then like there's an expiry date. Mm-hmm. And so, um, and in that, I think, you know, when I was talking, when you're asking about my life before, I was in a state of proving my worth as well. So in um, when it comes to hustle culture, my relationship with the hustle bustle, in 2018, I was running three businesses. So one wasn't enough. I needed to run three. <laughs> just so I needed to prove, I know it's hilarious, just to prove my worth. (laughs) And obviously it led to burnout. Mm -hmm. But at the time for me, what was going through my head in the time was I got to work hard. I got to sacrifice. This is the word sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it became a sacrificing. um, And so I I have a really great relationship with my younger sister because she's a lot younger than me. So I are, I'm kind of like a mother for her. I I raised her. um, And I, um, I got to a point in 2018 where, you know, in my head, I was like, I'm doing all this for, you know, for for something better for like the long-term vision, but like the kid, you know, like the, the kid, like the kid in her was like, you're not spending time with me. You're breaking promises, all these empty promises. You know, I said I would take her there, take her this, take her that. I couldn't because in my head, I'm thinking I needed to sacrifice, mm-hmm. right? Because I needed to prove myself. I needed to do more, right? And I had business. So, I mean, obviously when I have three companies, there's no way I, I ran everything myself. I had business partners and they were all men. Hmm. So in that state where me being the only female, I had to be in that level of that same energy, the hustle, exactly that hustle, that doing more. But yet at the same time, I had really horrible boundaries. I couldn't say no to things. And so the combination of everything um, really led to burnout. So fall of 2018, um, I describe myself as a walking zombie because, and I realized there was something wrong with me because I started just, I have panic attacks in the office and I just would just cry. And um, I remember the moment I thought something was wrong with me was I needed to go downtown to uh, visit some venues. And, and in my head, I was like, wait, how do I, like, I couldn't compute, like there was no cognitive function. I would just sit in front of the screen and just like blankly stare mm-hmm. at it. And I, you know, like I had the basic survival instincts, like I could eat, I could talk, but the cognitive function was all just like, mm-hmm. like it, left Left it left the building it left the building yeah it left the building and you know that really and obviously like I said three running trying to run three businesses when all your partners were um men um and when you can't say no and when you're controlling and stressing and um not sleeping well Mm -hmm. (laughs) all of that was just was leading to that point of where I I burned out Mm. and mm, yeah and I think a lot of people can can see themselves in the you know because as even we were saying you know like if you're not busy you're lazy you know and we have these sayings in in life where like you can't have it all you know I don't know who said that but seriously you know (laughs) But, you know, you, you got to work hard. If we even have the work hard, play hard. So we have all these, these language construct 
that actually create our internal world and which create our behavioral, our belief patterns, which actually creates our behaviors. So how did you crack those to bring in new beliefs and to bring in new definition of wealth way beyond just money, but had bringing in a redefinition, not, and I just want to say like, not just wealth of life, period. Like, how did you kind of shift that? How did you crack it? So to be able to shift it to live your life? Gosh. Um... So obviously that was 2018 and we're 2022. So it's been like four years in the making, so to speak. Um, I, I think fall of 2018 was a wake up call for me. Mm -hmm. And it really, it made me see also, not only was I sacrificing my health, but I was also sacrificing um, my relationship with my loved ones, with my sister mainly. And so it it was, I think it was kind of like this, yeah, so it was a wake-up call where I'm like, where I'm starting to understand, like, I think we can work hard, but there has to be some sort of container where there's non-negotiable, mm. where I'm not sacrificing like, where I'm not sacrificing my health, where I'm not sacrificing relationship with my loved ones. Because I, I, I feel like, and in that time, and I feel like most of us are like this, is this like, I'm all in. Yes. Right. Whatever it takes to make it work. Yeah. Right. And that, that was the mentality I had. And that's why I was losing sleep. I was basically, I, I was all in, so to speak. Right. Sacrificing everything thinking that th this is, um, yeah, think, like thinking that I'm doing this for the long term, that I needed to work hard to chase this. So, um, yeah, and I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to think in the four years how it all happened. Obviously, it didn't happen overnight. It was this wake up call awareness and really starting to to understand and seek and explore, right? Obviously, so it's like, okay, I had an awareness stage and then I started to look for answers. I, I didn't fully understand why, right? And it took me, um, actually, so this makes sense um, because I needed to understand the masculine energy and feminine energy part. This, yeah, yeah. So I needed to understand that balance because, um, and I know Sarah, you know this work quite well. Um, and that was when I first started to understand masculine energy and feminine energy. And that's why I started to call myself a feminine leadership coach mm -hmm. um, was because I realized I was in this wounded masculine. And so for like people that don't understand masculine energy and feminine energy maybe I need to explain a little bit yes. yeah so like the masculine energy is all about um is let me try to think the the sorry the wounded I should say the wounded masculine energy is all about like not trusting dominating controlling afraid of failure and all just like up in the head very logical and very like linear mm -hmm. okay so everything that is like not going with intuition not going with flow and like all those that's the wounded masculine and so I really had to understand how I was so conditioned in that wounded masculine which is the reason why the hustle and hustle and bustle culture exists right and so I really needed to understand then the other side, which was the feminine energy. Now, of course, with feminine energy, there's also wounded feminine and um, more of a, how do you say, awake, awakened feminine? Aware. Yeah. No, aware, you know, what, however you want to call it, right? So, um, yeah, so, so I, 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 I think the work for me really was understanding and really like leaning back to our natural, yeah, I, I think our natural state, right? Because as 
a female, bio, like biological female, I obviously we have both. I'm not one to say like, oh, you know, Lee Mac- no, both are necessary. Both oh. are required. Oh, my we have both. We have the yin and the yin, the masculine and the feminine. Um, but I was mostly operating in the masculine mm-hmm. and not even understanding the relationship between the masculine and the feminine energy. That's mm-hmm. really the missing link for me. Um, and this has kind of been my journey. Um, and so my nomadic um, journey, I would say, like full-time nomadic journey started October 2021. That's when I sold um, all my stuff and put stuff in boxes. And that for me was obviously a lot of trusting because um, I think Sarah, you know this story, but like I I don't speak Spanish. <laughs> so I've decided like my first place was going to be Mexico. I don't speak Spanish. I don't know anybody in Playa. So I moved to Playa del Carmen alone <laughs> without knowing the language, without knowing anybody, without even being here. <laughs> and it was complete trust, but more trust in myself. Trusting that no matter what happens, I will, I will make it work. And I'll be okay. And I will be okay. I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. Yeah. And I mean, there, there's so much that's happened, like just in, it's been a year and a month or two months. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it, it, yeah. So for 14 months and so much has happened that that's really taught me, you know, there were definitely moments where I fell like literally physically fell on my, on my face. (laughs) Um, But, but the thing is after this experience, like I just know that there's nothing in this world I cannot do because if I can move to a country (laughs) without speaking language, without knowing anybody, without being here alone, like there's nothing in this world that can stop me. (laughs) So, yeah. (laughs) And with that, there's, there's a saying you often say between rich and richness. Yes, that's right. And so this life I feel I live isn't, you know, when we think about wealth, we think about money, we think about money. But for me, this life that I live now is really, um, like I said, the wealth that I, I consider as wealth is really the freedom right? And it's the rich versus richness of life. So it's not all of money, but it's the quality of life. Because when I was chasing them, I, when I was chasing money, I didn't have good relationship with, um, you know, my sister, my loved ones. I was sacrificing my health, mm-hmm. right? And that's, that's really not a way to go. And I think about like, you know, when I'm on my deathbed, is this something... Do you mean like, I don't want to be the person who is just like, oh, I'm filthy rich, but my kids hate me. My grandkids hate me. My, um, do you mean like all these things? And, and I'm like the worst person in the world. And yet again, like, I, I don't, I don't want that. And even to, even before that extreme, it's like, yes, I have all this, but I missed out. I missed out on life. I missed out on adventures. I missed out on spending more time with my kids, spending more time with my spouse. I missed out. Yeah, yeah. And it's that time. Yeah, so yeah. So going back to all the freedoms, right? Time freedom is obviously another really big component because sure, you can have all the money in the world, but don't have the time to spend with your kids and your loved ones. Um, And that's really sad I, I I think and at the same time we all understand like we're all grown-ups we make choices but I think if I trace back your journey is to define what does a what's richness of life for you yeah and how many people have no idea yeah yeah 
stuck in the treadmill of life of more and being busy, being busy, and the, 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 and the next thing, and the next thing, and the next thing, and the next thing. But when we take the time to define, okay, what is, what does define richness of life for me and for you is like freedom of time. And I think freedom of time is a huge one for the majority of humans. Yep. Then I can start living in alignment with that. Yeah. Saying yes to what contributes to that and saying no to what does not contribute but until I have that clarity I'm just going to keep on walking I'm just going to keep on you know driving 300 miles an hour and you know as you know currently my life is full of all the freedoms mm. right time freedom location freedom financial freedom emotional freedom and all these things and I'm, I'm very grateful but a lot of people say oh you're you're just you're lucky you know and I'm just like actually <laughs> no <laughs> it was intentional we created this intentionally yes and that key word for me in this new era that we're starting that we're really kicking off is bringing living it with intention yeah. and I'm feeling that more and more people want to live with intention yes yes with yes. a greater awareness with a greater purpose with a greater sense of living not just surviving yeah yeah so yeah we talked about this like the state of survival desperation energy versus like um going towards desire like two very different um two different energy so i i you know, inviting people to define what does it mean for them challenge what the beliefs are well it's always been done like that oh well I never thought about it it's like what do I want people don't know. or that I think most people feel it's not possible this is another big one that's always come up and sometimes like I'll share um my life so it depends on what you know we, we all have different worldview mm -hmm. right so if I'm sharing you know what my life is like and stuff they're like like hey like cannot um compute cannot like just like what it's almost okay i i heard this analogy and i thought this was really great i was on i was listening to joe rogan's um, podcast and he said it's like telling the caveman people what light is like <laughs> like they live like sorry, sorry cavemen like living in caves sorry sorry live in caves they've always lived in caves all their life and you're trying to describe to people that have lived in caves in the underground like what life is like with sun and they're like eh? <laughs> yeah don't get it yes yes and and it's interesting like so the first thing that humans will do when we see something that is not in our realms of possibility is we'll separate well what was that we'll, we'll separate separate so that doesn't work for me well i can't do that my industry my i have kids or i have you know and, and we will separate from the other person because it's less painful yes 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 yeah we and we know this like we reject something that is outside of our belief system right people think like um no it, it we actually literally reject what doesn't fit in our box yeah it's easier yeah. Mm -hmm. so what are so you said that there's three steps or three pillars that you use to help your clients mm. breaks because beliefs are often also always passed on from generations to generations um what are the three pillars you were talking about where you help your clients uh, like levels I think like dimensions I think I was saying right yeah, yeah. so I um so one of the things that did happen in the four years was as I was looking for answers I um met a energy healer that was super that played a big role in this journey and so like all um all things when I find something that that's worked for me I get trained in it so I became um trained in Reiki um so I'm an energy healer as well so the point is so one level of one 
dimension I work with is the energetics. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then the next level is more of a 3D level, which is your nervous system. So all about like somatic healing, because we know, way down, <laughs> I know, you're, yeah, we yeah. are somatic healing, right? And so that's the emotional and somatic um, part. They, they go together. So that's also the 3D physical world that I, um, I help with. Um, so... Yeah, so those are kind of the tools I use to break generational trauma, as I, I've been saying. Um, so I'm just trying to think because I, um, and you know, Sarah, like I launched a financial literacy program. Mm -hmm. And so that's because I'm, I'm an angel investor. And so in that, there is also strategies involved. So very like practical, um, yeah, very practical things of how to do it. Uh, so um, yeah, so, so for me and in my journey, what I have learned is I'm spiritual and all, but I'm practical. <laughs> Like, I'm not going to sit on my couch and just, you know, things are not going to come to me unless I take actions, the right action towards the thing. And I think that this is kind of what I'm seeing is happening, you know, and Sarah, maybe you can chew in on this as well, yeah. is, you know, I'm, I'm seeing how we have very, I, I guess you can say spectrums. Let's just say spectrums. Yeah. Um, you have spirituality really all talking about ascension and all stuff and manifestation manifestation blah, 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 and all the stuff and for me i'm like spiritual ascension is great guys but let's ground first you are still a 3d physical being in the 3d world so like let's talk about all levels versus just like 5d and 5d ascension yeah. so th this is kind of like my my belief is you can't operate one without the other, right? So you can be all, all be all up here in the 5D, but the 3D is like, oh, something happens. And then I'm like reactive and like, you know, because- We're still doing or not doing things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and again, and also um, if I'm only in the 3D, right? That's not, that's not being open to miracle and possibilities and magic right so I really like that I play in all the different fields mm. because that that that's really all it is yes we have the practical and concrete stuff but we're also open to magic and miracles I want to go back to you know if we, if we tie that in with redefining wealth it is also the combination because in our redefinition or in our true definition of wealth maybe freedom is something that we're seeking but right now it's not in our realms of possibility so it's like all right so how can I work on that and how can I work on the doing and the nervous system at the same time how can I you know see what's possible and look at people like yourself who's a nomad or different people who have different ways of doing things and say oh my gosh I had never I never thought that that was a possibility. Yeah, yeah. And go into curiosity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In alignment with what's my definition. Yeah. That's what life is all about. Yeah. So it, it it's this co-creation. Yes. Because I I think you I think I've shared some some of my like people I meet, like travel stories, right? And I, I can talk about it again here, but like, you know, for me, um, there are things that obviously the action I take, the path. So, so it's like, you know, the path, my aligned path, I'm taking action towards it, right? But on this path, I will meet people. And I mean, I, I can't predict who I'm gonna meet mm -hmm. and all these things. So like, I think one of the, one of the stories I told you was um, I was on a plane from Vancouver to um, Cancun and sitting right next to me, was someone I like we just met we we're just chatting and yada yada so I thought so in my plans I was just on a plane I was going to take the airport bus um back to um this place back home 
And that was what I thought. But instead, because I met a new friend, I ended up um, spending, I, I didn't spend like all the nights there in all inclusive, like he was staying at all inclusive and he's like, hey, why don't you come and like, you know, you can eat for free and like all these like enjoy all the all inclusive stuff. And I'm like, uh, yeah, yes, right. So like in that, I'm just demonstrating how I thought this was happening, but I was open to something else. And I was attracting, um, you know, I was attracting this in my life. I was open to yeah. a possibility. So yeah, so just one one story. Yes, and that's, you know, when you were talking about the richness of life, it's having that open, the openness and the space to be able to grab onto it and say, all right, you know what? Let's do this. Let's go. Let's go and experience this. And that's what makes a fulfilled life. Yeah, yeah. On our deathbed, we want to say, did I give it everything I got? Yeah. Yeah, I, I want to tell my grandkids all these stories. I'm like, remember the, when I was your age, <laughs> all the crazy yes, stuff. I'm like, yes, to live a life that we get to tell stories about. Not, I worked 80 hours a week for 20 somewhat years. Yeah, yeah. So we had a big house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It It's really been about experience um over material love it just got want to be super respectful of your time where can people go to first of all follow all your shenanigans first <laughs> and second to learn more about you and how you help people to transmute that and get out of the hustle redefine live a full uh, live a life that is like filled with time and freedom and where can people learn more about you? gosh yeah well i'm on facebook of course um so my brand is called fierce femme and um but i think my personal profile is probably more active than the uh, business profile so if you just look me up uh jessica lee oh my website is also jessica lee.co so from the website you can find my social media handles and all that stuff so yeah i'm yes. awesome i'll make sure we put all the links and yes you, you always have really interesting stories of whatever's <laughs> happening and it's like man, did she really end up there like it's yeah and we have great chats about it so i want to thank you for taking the time i'm so happy we we're able to make this happen and it's just I find it amazing just to watch you go and really thrive life. Oh my God. Oh, thank you, Sarah. Thank you. I, I, I really appreciate your time as well and your invitation on this. Thank, thank you. So we can talk about something we're both really passionate about. <laughs> thank you. I hope you like this episode. I hope even more is that it's going to open new possibilities to see that different things are possible, to redefine what's your definition of wealth, to redefine the hustle, to see, you know what? When we don't know what we want, we're gonna say yes to everything. When we don't know what we want, we don't have priorities, our priorities. We don't, when we don't know what's our definition of a wealth, of a richness of life that we wanna live, then we're going to live somebody else's definition. So yes, I do hope you, you enjoyed this episode, but really what I hope more is that we all just start defining better, gaining clarity on what does it mean for us? Because as we know it, there's one life. Might as well live it full, full out because so much more is possible.